Hi, I'm Colin Campbell, and my book, Finding the Words, Working Through Profound Loss with Hope and Purpose, will be published March 14th, 2023, by Tarcher Perigee, an imprint of Penguin Random House. When my two beautiful, loving teenage children, Ruby and Hart, were killed by a drunk driver in 2019, I was plunged into terrifying, agonizing grief. The pain of their loss was so great that I was sorely tempted to avoid thinking about them. I remember we had these photos hanging in our living room, and a few days after the crash, I found myself looking away from their faces, too scared to feel the pain. And in that moment, I had an epiphany. I realized that I couldn't allow my fear to get in the way of loving my children, that if I tried to avoid my grief, it would mean avoiding the memories of Ruby and Hart, and I couldn't do that. In fact, if I wanted to access all my feelings about my children and all the love we had shared, I would have to lean into the pain. Instead of avoiding all the restaurants, hikes, music, and friends that we used to enjoy as a family, I'd be better off seeking them out. And as painful as it was, I trusted that with time, it would become easier and easier to look at their photos and talk to friends and family about them. That slowly the proportion of pain to joy would tilt more and more in favor of joy. Once I decided to not be afraid of my grief, everything changed. I didn't want to numb my feelings with alcohol or drugs or avoidance. I wanted to feel everything. I discovered that I wanted to talk about Ruby and Hart, that I needed to talk about them and my loss in order to process and understand my new reality. I also discovered the power of mourning rituals, actively mourning my children by gathering together my community of supporters. Performing an action that honored Ruby and Hart allowed us all the opportunity to talk about them and about our loss. But the problem we found was that even though we wanted to talk to our community, it wasn't easy for our friends and family to talk to us about our grief. When friends came to visit me and my wife Gail after the crash, they were too scared to have conversations with us. They would come through our front gate anxiously, not knowing what to say. They wouldn't dare mention Ruby and Hart out of fear that it might trigger us and cause us pain. And after the first few weeks, many friends stopped reaching out to us altogether because they assumed we wanted to be left alone in our grief. I was in danger of writing off many of my closest friends out of anger and resentment. And sure enough, in the grief groups that I attended, I heard over and over again the refrain that I was going to lose most of my friends and family, that our community would fail us in our time of need, and I'd have to find new friends. These fellow mourners had suffered a second loss, and as a result had become bitter at being abandoned. But I knew my friends and family loved me and wanted to support me, but just didn't know how to. I knew that if I could find a way to articulate my needs and grief, that they would rise to the occasion. I was determined to not lose my community. I needed everyone I could get to accompany me on this terrible journey. So I developed what I called my grief spiel. I would pull each friend aside individually and tell them the deal, that I, it was okay to talk about Ruby and Hart and the car crash and my grief. In fact, I needed to talk about all those things. I couldn't really talk about anything else in the early days after the funeral. I wanted to laugh and cry with friends. I reassured them that they couldn't trigger me because I was already triggered all the way. My friends found it incredibly useful to get this kind of guidance from me. It enabled me to have the conversations I needed, and it prevented me from becoming bitter and isolated. The fact is, we need to talk about our grief to other people. It's how we process our loss. Talking about our grief is how we psychologically integrate our painful reality. But our culture doesn't prepare us, prepare any of us to talk about loss. You know, we learn about love from the day we were born, but grief remains shrouded in mystery. I realized it wasn't enough to talk about my own grief. I needed to teach my community how to talk about it too. One of the most common condolences that was said to me in my grief was, there are no words. I encountered this unhelpful phrase over and over again. It was shocking how often people would say it, email it, or write it on cards. 
Now, it's meant to be a safe, innocuous expression of condolence, but the problem is it acts as a perfect conversation stopper. It immediately ends any chance of dialogue about grief. It's telling the mourner that we can't really discuss their grief because it's just too awful. There are no words that would be applicable. This empty phrase encapsulates all that is wrong with how our society handles grief. We need words to process our grief, and if the whole world is telling us, literally, there are no words, then we are going to struggle and feel alone and abandoned in our pain. Interestingly enough, children never said there are no words. Ruby and Hart's teenage friends all found words. They came right up to us and told us how much they loved Ruby and Hart and how devastated they were, and then they would share a beautiful memory or a funny story about my kids. It's only adults who don't know what to say. I wrote this book to offer grieving people or people who love someone who's grieving some tools to help them articulate their needs and build their community. I share my own experiences and the insights I gathered from talking with other mourners about ways to cope with guilt, denial, rage, and despair. Ultimately, I offer some paths forward, some ways of reconnecting to meaning and purpose. I explore the challenges of being in grief and in life at the same time. How do we hold grief and joy in the same hand? How do we lean into the healthy pain of grief, but avoid the unnecessary suffering that so often accompanies it? I hope that sharing the specifics of my journey is helpful to others struggling with grief of any kind.